important you got to do it when it says accurately it needs to be very very accurate so you need a very sharp pencil uh, and it should be done in pencil so you can correct anything and if there's any construction or working lines uh, you need to leave those because the examiner needs to see how exactly you've done this so first of all it's always best to start with the base of the triangle if you're trying to do this triangle we're doing it seven centimeters long the base so for me I'm going to start here I'm going to draw exactly seven centimeters or 70 millimeters um, and I've slightly gone over there so let's do it again all the way up to exactly move that other way now I want to draw an angle of 75 degrees here, so I'll grab my protractor. It's really important you get this target, you see this zero line that runs, runs along the bottom and this vertical line at 90, there's little targets like a gun sight, a sniper scope. So you need to get that and you need to make the zero line disappear and you need that sniper scope target right exactly on the end here and the line has to disappear under here. Now I'm going this way around the protractor to get 75, so I've got to start from north, so I'm counting on the inside. You've got to be careful if you count on the other way you're counting um, around the outside of the protractor, so don't get confused with the numbers, especially if you go beyond 90. So keep counting the same inside or outside. Here, I want to go to 75 degrees, so I'm going to count around 0, 10, 20, all the way around to 70. Now 75 is exactly in the middle here, so I want to just put a little line there. There's my line, I'm just going to go over that. So it goes here, and I want it to be, and I want it to be um, five centimeters long. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my ruler into place, and I'm going to measure exactly. Oh, this comes out exactly five centimeters, which is lucky for me. So sometimes your line might not be long enough, or it might be too long. So I might just put a little mark. And then if I take that off, um, I'm going to label this as 75 degrees in the corner here. And this is where I want the uh, vertex or the corner of my triangle to be. So I can just join that up now with the other end accurately. And I will just label everything that they've labeled. So I'll label this as 7 centimeters, and I'd label this as five centimeters and I'd leave that line on there that's what we call a construction line in fact the next one I'll do it in grey and do it in them so it looks more like a pencil and I'd leave that pencil line on it uh, just to show the examiner exactly what I've done so even if I make a, a slight mistake then I can still get the marks okay let's go to the next one this time I'm asked to do quadrilateral and I've got again it's very similar I've just got to go through the process so let's get a grey pencil and I'm going to start with a base of 6 this time so I'm going to draw that out first Oops. and then if I move this out of the way I've got my pencil line there and that's 6 centimeters. I want an angle of 85 so same thing as before line up my protractor exactly I want 85, is exactly halfway between 80 and 90, so I'm just going to put a dot there, move that out of the way, and then get my ruler. I want to go 5 centimeters, so I'm going to measure it around, and then just use my pencil again. I'm going to go all the way up, draw a line all the way up, and I might even just put a little dot at 5 centimeters. And then from there, I need to measure 140 degrees on the inside. So this becomes a bit tricky. So that's where I want my line to finish. This is a bit tricky, so I want it 140. So I'm going to have to spin my protractor around, line up my target, and then spin it on the spot. You've got to be a bit more careful with you. Let's move my ruler out of the way. You can see my line's disappeared. That's right in the center, and I want to measure 140 on the inside. So I'm going to go around the inside, all the way around to 90, and then all the way around to 140, staying on the inside. Let's just put a little dot there. This time, I'm going to get my ruler, get it exactly on the end where I want it. Let's move this round. I only want to go to 4 centimeters this time. 
Just looks like that. Take it away. And then I need to draw my final line in, which is down in here. So actually, our, our quadrilateral doesn't look exactly the same as it does in the picture here. Um, but that's we've we've done it accurately. We've measured this angle around here to be 85 because their angles aren't aren't good. So we measure around this one round to be 85 degrees. This was six centimeters. This was five centimeters. This up here was four centimeters, and this angle here was 140 degrees. If I really wanted to, I could go over it in a dark pen afterwards, leaving the construction lines in. Or go a bit harder with my pencil, leaving all my working lines so the examiner can see exactly what I've done. You can see this line's here, I can see that this dot's here, and I use that. And there's my uh, quadrilateral. Doesn't look quite the same, but uh, these angles weren't uh, exact. And let's go on to question three. Okay, we've got to construct a uh, different triangle this time which says accurately and this time it doesn't have a picture for us to follow although it does give us all the instructions we need so again let's get a pencil and the first thing we have to do is to make AB 5.3 so let's say AB is the base it doesn't have to be let's say AB is the base and it's 5.3 so being as accurate as you possibly can Let's label this side A, this side B, and then we said it was 5.3 centimetres. Now, we want a C, which is going to be somewhere above, and we want it to be 6 centimetres, but the angle A to B to C, which is up here, A to B to C is going to be 112, so the inside angle is going to be 112 degrees. The middle letter, you travel from A to B to C. So angle B is going to be 112. Let's grab our protractor. Let's spin it around. And we want this inside angle to be 112. So this time we're counting around the outside. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, all the way to 90. Stick on the outside. 110, 100, 110, 111, 112. So we want our dot just to be there. Move our protractor out of the way, and now we want let's put that exactly at the corner, and we want it to be six centimeters. So we line up where our dot was, we're going to draw a line all the way going up exactly to six. Let's take up that off, and then let's add in the final line, which you could do with your ruler which is going to lead to where we wanted, which was C. So let's label that C. And we label this angle in here 112 degrees. Again, if we wanted to, we could go over... Oops, not like that. We could go over our line if we really wanted to, leaving in any construction lines, but we could just leave it like that down in pencil. Okay? Question four. This time it says measure the bearing of A from B and B from A. There's a few things we need to remember about bearings. So let's just note those down. First thing we need to measure about bearings, bearings always start from north. Second thing is they always go clockwise. And the third thing is they're always three digits. I'll see if that so for example. 60 degrees becomes 0, 060 zero degrees. And um, okay, they've drawn the north lines on from us, so that's okay. So we want to measure the bearing of A from B. Now this is very confusing, we've got to be careful. Now we want to find out where A is if we start at B. Look at A from B. So really we want from north going clockwise, we want this angle in here to work out what that is, it's a bearing. So let's get a protractor. Line up our zero line exactly there. 
spin it around so zero starts at north, which looks like that. And then we want to find out what bearing this angle is. So if we look, it's 57, three little lines back from 60 on the outside. So it's 57. So it's an angle of 57 degrees, which in terms of the bearing would be 0, 5, 7 degrees because we went from north, went clockwise, and we needed three digits. If you want to do it the other way around, uh, you want to measure the bearing of B from A. That means you're starting at A, looking at B. So we're looking at B from A. Now we need to go all the way around here. Okay, and we need to start from north and go clockwise. We want to measure that whole angle. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can either start from north, go around 180, and if I spin my protractor all the way around, I then just have to add on this bottom bit, which I make from naught going around to 57 here. I make that naught from 57 here, so it makes 180 plus 57, which is 237 degrees. Or I can um, measure the daring from the top if I just started from naught and measure backwards, backwards from the 360 if I stay on the inside, uh, 10 all the way around to 90, 123, and I could do 360, take away 123. So, alternative method 123 will get me to 237 degrees, whichever way. So, I know the bearing is 237 degrees. Okay, if we go one question on. This one's a very common exam question. So you've got an aeroplane which is on a bearing from one place and a different bearing from the other, and you want to find out where that is. So from Birmingham, it's on a bearing of 050. So let's get north straight up. And then we want to measure a bearing of 050. So go around the outside. 50 degrees is just there, so I know it's somewhere along that line. Oops. So if I get my ruler, place it just there, line it up, and draw a line all the way along, and I don't know where it is, so I'm going to draw it as long as possible. But I also know that it's on a bearing of 290 from Norwich, or well, 290 is going to be 180 degrees plus um, plus 110 degrees. So if I spin it all the way around the other side of the way, if I go around this way, it's 180 degrees plus 110. So I need to go another 110 degrees, which is here. I know that actually that my aeroplane is on the bearing from here. And I join that up. Oops. Join it up there, somewhere along that line. And the only place where they cross is where going to be where the aeroplane is. So the aeroplane is at this position here. Let's call this position P. So we found the bearing of 0, 050 0 degrees from Norwich, uh, from Birmingham. And all the way around from north, we measured this as 290 degrees from Norwich and our plane was exactly where those lines cross. Again, I'll leave these lines on so the examiner knows exactly what I've done. Okay.